Chapter 9, Sing Down the Moon. I'm on page 43. On the tenth night after the bail, Rosita and I went to the church. I tried to go alone, for this was the night Nehana had told me to come, but the senora went with us. While we were walking up the street, she asked Rosita to tell me about the fiesta. It is called Easter, Rosita said, and told me all she had learned during the time she had been a slave. How Jesus Christo was placed upon a wooden cross and slain, and then how he rose from the dead. Jesus Christo, Rosita said, is like all our gods if you put them together. He is falling water and spider woman, but he is not cunning like falling water, nor is he vengeful like spider woman. I nodded my head as though I understood everything she said, but I was not listening. I wonder if Nehana would come to the church, if she would see the three of us together and leave without speaking to me. I also wondered where Tallboy was, even if even now he was hidden somewhere near, waiting to take me home. I wondered so hard that I stumbled in a hole and fell down. I got dirt on my new velveteen dress and scuffed my red button shoes, which made the senora angry. The door of the church was covered with pine boughs, and inside there were flowers everywhere. Smoke rose in the air. It smelled sweet as it swirled about me. The church was crowded with people, and though I kept glancing around with children dressed in white gowns or were singing, I did not see Nehana. When the singing and the talk were over, we went out with the others. Nehana stood near the door, all but her eyes covered with a shawl. I was walking behind Rosita and Senora. Nehana turned her back and waited for them to pass. Then she glanced at me. She was a dozen steps away and many people were around her, but I saw her hold up one finger as she had held up ten the night of the bail. That is all she did before she disappeared. But I was sure that she meant for me to come there the following night. On the way back to the house, the senora asked me if I liked the fiesta. I said yes, which seemed to please her. I began to plan how I would get to the church alone on the following night. The next morning, when Rosita was not looking, I wrapped 20 tortillas in a cloth, 10 for me and 10 for the black dog, and hid them in my room. When it was time for me to help with the supper, I told Rosita that I had a headache and went to bed. We all know what she's planning for. I'm on page 45, middle. The Signore came and gave me a spoonful of something out of a bottle which choked me, but I did not mind. As soon as she left, I jumped up and got my blanket and the bundle of tortillas. I closed the door and walked quietly along the path to the front of the house. The gate was locked. I had forgotten that the senora locked it each night. The adobe wall that surrounded the house was higher than my head and the top was covered with pieces of broken glass. I stood there looking at it. I heard the senora's voice and the closing of a door somewhere. In a panic, I threw the tortillas over the wall, then the blanket. The blanket caught on the pieces of glass and hung there. This was fortunate for me because I was able to put the black dog on top of the wall and climb up after him. I jumped to the ground. The dog followed me and we ran. I took my blanket, but I forgot the tortillas. People were going into the church. Nehana came out of the shadows and with her was Running Bird. Nehana did not go in, but went past the door and along the side of the church. We followed her, walking carefully in the dark. We came to a ditch where water was flowing ankle deep and ran along it. We traveled for a long time in darkness. Then the moon rose and we came to a path which we followed to the ridge of the low hill. Below us, in a small valley, I saw a clump of cottonwood trees, lights winking, excuse me, among them, and nearby the outlines of a building. While we stood there, catching our breath, men and women on horseback passed us and rode down toward the lights. That is where the penitentes meet, Nahana said. I do not belong to them, but they will not harm us. It is far from town, so the penitentes come here on their horses. There will be many horses for us to choose from. Without horses, they would catch us before we went far, as they caught me once. When we reached the cottonwood trees, Nahana told Running Bird and me to put the blankets over our heads so that only our eyes showed. Many horses were tethered in the cottonwood grove, some hobbled, some tied to the trees. Nehana went slowly, looking at them as we passed. Most of them were fine horses and had bridles made of silver and turquoise. A few men were standing among the trees, smoking. 
and a crowd was gathered in front of the church, which was long and narrow like the white man's coffin. I have chosen three good horses, Nehana whispered as we left the grove, but to take them now is unwise. We must wait for the right time. The three horses are pintos, and they are tethered near the far side of the grove. Running Bird and I followed her into the church and stood in the back near the door. I will tell you when to leave, she whispered. It will be when they put out the candles and everything is dark. Do not speak and keep your faces hidden. When I go, follow me quickly. Half the people in the church were women and they held lighted candles. The men carried leather whips tipped with pieces of iron. Everyone stood quietly facing the altar. Clouds of sweet smelling smoke drifted back and forth. It was very hot and hard to breathe, but I kept my head covered. At the far end of the church, a drum began to beat. Someone played on a flute softly and a bent old man spoke a verse and people joined him, repeating what he said. A tall figure suddenly appeared at the door, a man with a circle of cactus thorns around his head. He was carrying a heavy wooden cross on his back. On his face, there were spots of blood. Nana grasped my arms. I felt her body grow stiff beside me. As I looked at the man standing in the doorway, his mouth began to move in pain, and I saw a flash of white teeth. The Spaniard, Nehana whispered, the slave catcher. We stood tight against the wall, holding each other by the hand. The Spaniard looked one way and the other, peering through the candle smoke at everyone, at us. I did not breathe. At last, he looked away and began to stagger toward the far end of the church as people made way for him. They think he's Jesus Christo, Nohana whispered. He reached the far wall and two men took the cross from his back and a man held him so he would not fall. The flute started to play again. Someone gave a loud cry like the cry of a wounded animal and all the candles as if there were only one went out at the same time. While the darkness settled down around us, there was a time of awful silence. Then women began to weep, and louder than the weeping came the sound of whips whistling through the air, striking again and again. Nehana pulled at my dress, and the three of us squirmed our way through the darkness and found the door. Nehana ran toward the cottonwood trees, and we followed her, the black dog at my heels. Nehana did not pause. She ran toward the three pintos tethered at the far edge of the grove. The moon was high in the east. We got into the saddles and rode toward it. Moving slowly, the mesquite until the sound of weeping and the crack of whips died away into the night. The end of chapter nine. So in your learning journal, um, seven, and not, seven through nine are grouped together. So you have actually only one vocabulary to choose from and you would write what the word is that you chose and what it is, what it means. Um, give me some synonyms and antonyms, write a sentence with it and draw a picture. Um, the next activity is on page 16, and um, you are actually just circling true or false for each one of those statements. And then um, the last one there for chapter seven through nine, it says um, an interview session. You and a partner, and if you um, could do this with somebody at home, or maybe like a mock trial and go back and forth with two different hats on or something like that, if you don't have anybody to help you, um, that's fine too. But you and a partner need to write five questions and answers to describe Bright Morning's life away from Canyon to Shelley. And again, I, you know I'm very flexible in how you do this. Um, you can simply just write the five questions and, and, and have somebody read them and then you answer them. All right, you could be Bright Morning. Um, you could do it as like a whole, um, you know, what some, you know, that you interviewed her, but this is what she said type thing. So your take on it is fully up to you. And then you were gonna share that video right there. Um, if you wanna do a question answer because you can't get somebody to do the video with you, I will accept that. I just obviously would rather the video. It's more fun, I, I enjoy seeing you guys. Um, so that takes us to the end of chapter nine. So have fun with the activities. Uh, let me know if there's anything you need.